So I got a little bit of work done on the coaxial bike this afternoon between other jobs. Um, as you can see, I temporarily made the swing arm uh, linkage out of steel. Uh, the shock itself will actually sit just above, so it's just just missing this point here. And you can see I've got a little white mark here. I'm going to have to do a little notch there, and you'll see why in a second. Can't do this with one hand, so I'll have to remove the linkage. Right. So now it comes up, and then those two linkages touch. So they touch when the rear of the swing arm has gone up 210 millimeters. I'm not gonna need that much, but um, I'd like to have a little bit of clearance there. So if at some stage it does bottom out, um, you know, I've got a little bit more room to play with. Um, what else of note while I'm here? So I'm gonna strengthen up the this section here um, so you can see that this is just a bit of all thread at the moment that's actually going to be a solid piece of pipe welded to these two points that runs through and then these sections here are going to be thickened up probably with an, another piece of three mil plate so they'll be six mil thick um, which is probably overkill actually but it is what it is. Ah, uh, yeah. So in the process of doing this, I had to move the actual point where the the lug attached to the swing arm just forward a little bit. Um, this linkage here has uh, flanged bearings in it, so there's four flanged bearings inside that linkage. So, and then there'll be two flanged bearings inside the pipe that goes into this section here. Um, what else? I'm still waiting on, still waiting on the rear hub before I figure out exactly what I'm doing down this end of the uh, swing arm. I may end up remaking the entire swing arm. We'll, we'll just see. Um, I'm almost definitely going to be putting a piece of some kind of structural uh, member to triangulate that bottom section. Uh, it, it, again, it probably doesn't probably doesn't need it, but um, you know, can't hurt to have that little bit bit extra there. You know, what's it going to weigh? A couple of hundred grams at most. Somewhere else to attach some cables of two or whatever if I need to. Uh, what else? Um, I'm pretty happy with the way the strengthening up here on the. And the uh, head tube area worked out. Um, obviously, in the new second revision, when I make revision B, this will be a little bit different. I'll have this this section uh, laser cut and folded in one piece. This is actually made of multiple pieces. And same with uh, these sections here. This this piece and this piece on both sides will be laser cut as one piece to uh, just remove a few of the welds and things that don't need to be there. Um, you know, the less welding, the quicker it is to make and, you know, the cheaper it is to make and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and also on revision B, I will probably actually lower this pivot point here. You can see I haven't actually left myself enough room to lower it as it is now, but I'll probably lower that by about 10 or 15 millimeters. Um, just so that that gives me a little bit more room beneath at the bottom of the seat post here to the shock itself. Uh, it does clear, but it's a little bit close. Um, what else? Uh, I think I forgot to mention or I haven't mentioned yet that um, when I folded this, because I folded this by hand with my, just with a pan brake that I made out of some bits of angle and things like that. Um, 
and so when I designed it in CAD it had a, a K factor, a bend allowance for a you know a hydraulic press brake which would have made this a tighter radius but also uh, kind of not stretched as far so this is actually stretched quite a long way and actually ended up wider in both directions than than design. I'm, actually I'm kind of happy it did to be honest because it's not too big and it gives me a bit more clearance for the battery so it's about it's almost it's just about a hundred mil in both directions it's slightly more slightly less um, which gives me heaps of space so I might actually be able to fit kind of uh, 20s 9p or maybe even 10p in there so it was designed for 160 cells minimum plus BMS um, so if I can fit a few more cells in there then you know happy days it doesn't mean I have to but it's not always nice to have the option um, what else controller is going to sit in this section here um, the controller the, the Yu Yang King controller I've got is a little bit too big at the moment in its current case but uh, that's on the list of things to modify to make fit I'll probably wait until I've got everything together and just kind of zip tie it on the down tube and do a few Franken bike tests before I go too crazy with it hopefully the nuclear controller will be my nuclear 12f will be ready before then because that'll actually fit in that space perfectly and have a little bit of a lip around it in all directions so that'd be nice excuse the cat in the background um yeah that's about it for now anything you want to know just hit me up and let me know um obviously i've still got to get the shock front shock um somebody on one of the forums offered me one for a pretty good price just before christmas and then i got busy and I haven't got around to giving back to them, so hopefully that's sorted. So yeah, I'm waiting on the shock and the rear hub before I can go much further with fab. I can finish off this linkage section and whatnot, but um, I really need that that uh, hub to figure out this back end, and that kind of dictates a few few other things. Um, and yeah, then it's just batteries and. Um, Batteries, wiring, ah, oh, and I've still got to make a bottom cover plate. So that's going to be a kind of a folded aluminium piece that is actually attached to the bottom of the battery and it's a kind of a bash guard slash bottom of the battery. So when the battery slides in, the whole bottom section here is covered with the aluminium case and that'll tidy up that bottom section there. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Any questions, um, hit me up and we'll see where we end up. Cheers.